Here's a list of the top seven APRS bots. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to be taking a look at several different APRS bots. Now, this is not an all-inclusive list, but just seven of the ones that I find most interesting. Now, if you're new to APRS, you might be asking, what in the world is an APRS bot? And it is simply an automated service that will respond to certain messages sent over the APRS network. While you don't have to be connected to the internet in order for this to work, somewhere along the path, the internet will come into play. So I can send it over the air using this HT, but at some point after the RF leaves my radio, it will pass through the internet to get your answer and return it to you over RF. While we're playing with this today, I'll be using the BTEC UV Pro radio connected to an Android phone running APRS Droid. Now, I've done a deep dive on APRS Droid. I'll leave a link to that video down in the description below. And I'll also leave a link to the BTEC UV Pro along with this diamond antenna that I'm running on top of it. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to the phone and get started. All right, so we'll be sending APRS messages today. So I'm going to go into my message list and I'm going to click send message to. Now, the first one we want to look at is find, F-I-N-D. Now, this is uh, SSID specific. So if you ask for this for dash seven, it's going to be different if you ask again for dash nine SSID. We'll just use uh, K8 MRD dash nine. And what this is going to do is this is going to tell us how long it's been since he has been online with his dash nine SSID. And you can see right there on the screen that it's been four days and 17 hours ago since he was last heard. Depending on how his radio was configured, it will tell you the speed that he was traveling, the distance away it is, and the exact grid square he was in the last time he was heard. So this is one of the things that I use all the time to see if another operator is online with APRS if I want to send him a message. So if I'd heard him say in the last uh, 20 or 30 minutes, it would probably indicate that he was online and could receive an APRS message. Now, another one that I like to use is AP Spot. This is a way that you can spot yourself if you're doing a Parks on the Air activation. Now, I'm going to leave a link down below to an entire video that I did on AP Spot because you have to have the syntax exactly right and I can never remember that off the top of my head. Another APRS bot that you might be interested in is the ISS bot. And this has one job and one job only. It's going to tell you when the next pass of the International Space Station is uh, for your current location. And it gets that information based on the last beacon that you sent out over APRS. So you can see right here it returned AOS in six hours and 39 minutes. And it will give me that exact time in Zulu. So 29, or I'm right, I'm sorry, 2303 Zulu. And then it tells us the direction that the pass is going to come up. So it will rise out of the Southeast from my location on its next pass. Now, another one that I use on a regular basis is who is. And you simply send a message to who hyphen is and you give it a call sign and what this is going to do is this is going to return a little bit of information about that operator it's kind of like doing a qrz lookup but doing it over aprs and as you can see from that result ki6 naz is an extra class operator and that's josh out of california and it also gives us the country right there on the far right hand side now, another one that I use quite frequently is the SMS service. In order to use this service, however, you do have to opt in the phone numbers that you want to use or that you think you might send a message to. So personally, what I did was I opted in myself, my wife, my kids, and any other family members that I thought I might want to send a message to. But once you've got those numbers opted in on the website, and guys, I'll leave a link to that site down in the description below, but this service is also brought to you by NA7Q, 
who did the uh, forked version of APRS Droid that I'm running today. So fantastic service that he runs here, and this replaces the old SMS GTE service. So I'm just going to send a message to myself. So I'm going to use an alias that I've created. So I just say at me, and we'll just put test for video. And we'll go ahead and send that out, and that should come right back to me as a text message here in just a second. Now, I do have my phone in do not disturb mode for the video, so let's go check that text message. And you can see the message came in right there as the last text message in this thread. Now, the other cool thing about this is if I reply to this message that's a text message in my phone, it's going to come back to me as an APRS message. So if we go back over to the SMS message that I sent earlier, you can see it returned that got it right there as an APRS message. Now, another bot that I use quite a bit, especially when I'm traveling, is the repeat bot. If we just send a message to repeat, and then in the body of that message, you can either put N1, N2, or N3. And that's going to return the closest one, two, or three repeaters to you. So let's go ahead and send that message out. And we should get a reply here in just a second telling us what the closest repeater is. And that would be the KU4B repeater in my hometown. And it gives us the frequency. It tells us which direction the offset is. It gives us the tone. It tells us how far away the repeater is and the direction the repeater is from our current location. And again, guys, that's based on the GPS coordinates of your last APRS packet, uh, beacon packet that went out. Another one that I use on a very regular basis is WXBot. And I've already sent quite a few messages back and forth to this over the last week or so. But with WXBot, we can simply put in today and go ahead and send that out. And it's going to return our uh, current forecast for today, again, based on your GPS coordinates. You can also send it tomorrow or tonight, depending on exactly what you want in the forecast. So there's the reply right there that uh, four miles south-southeast of Walter Hill, Tennessee, it tells us it's going to be cloudy with a high of 53 degrees. Now, if we wanted uh, the forecast for maybe somewhere completely different, we could give it, let's see, what? let's do 35652. I'm just going to send it a zip code that is for Florence, Alabama. So we'll send that out, and we should get the forecast for Florence, Alabama uh, for today's weather. And it looks like I gave it Rogersville zip code instead of Florence, but you can still see that we get the forecast for Rogersville, Alabama, which is the zip code I gave it instead of Florence. Florence would have been 35630. Now, this next one may seem a bit redundant, but there's a lot more than you can do with this than what I'm going to show you in this next example. However, I have done a full video on MPAD, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. But for now, we're going to send a message to MPAD, and we're just going to give it, we'll give it that uh, Florence, Alabama address, our zip code this time, and go ahead and say uh, send. And what that's going to do is that's going to return the weather forecast in a little bit of a different format for Florence, Alabama. But MPAD has a lot of other features that you can use. I'll show you one more here in just a second. And it's one of the coolest ones that I think MPAD has. But you can see there that it did return. Uh, it says Edgemont, Alabama. And I'm not exactly sure why that is because I'm fairly certain 35630 is a zip code for Florence, Alabama. However, let me show you one more example here before we wrap this up. I'm going to send this again to MPAD. In the uh, body of the message, I'm going to put POSMSG, all as one word. Oop, got to spell it right. POSMSG, all as one word. And then I'm simply going to give it an email address. So we'll use KM4ACK at ARRL.net. And we'll go ahead and hit the OK button. And what that's going to do is that's going to send a lot of information about my exact location right here, right now, to the email address that I just put in to that message. And I should get something back here in just a second that tells me that the request has been sent uh, over email. 
and you can see it right there on the screen, the requested position report was emailed to its recipient. And that is a good one to know if you're out and about. You should definitely give that a try today. Email it to yourself so you can see exactly what one of those detailed reports looks like. So there's a few more ways that you can get more information out of the APRS system. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.